electric dreams. Some riders hate the idea of going electric, others have already bought one <laughs> and are trying to convince everyone to go electric. Our worst experience so far? We reviewed the KTM e-ride a year ago. It had really bad battery life. Its design is somewhere between an enduro and trials bike, which would be fine if it had good traction. But it has no traction control. The electric motor spins the rear wheel crazily the moment there's any loose terrain. And on our steeper hill climbs, the claimed 20 horsepower could barely get the rider to the top. Our best experience so far, the EM ePure. This electric trials bike works surprisingly well. The battery range is roughly equivalent to the range you get from a small trials fuel tank. The electronics incorporate great traction control. It has excellent grip in slippery terrain. The power output isn't far short of your typical 200 to 250 cc engine and the EM only weighs a bit more than your average trials bike. French manufacturer EM first made quite decent electric trials bikes about 10 years ago. An A-grade rider at our trials club was doing quite well with the EM 2.7. He admitted that A-grade riders would quickly find the limitations of the EM, but for everyone else it ticks a lot of boxes. If I got back into trials, I would be very tempted, <laughs> although it does cost a few thousand dollars more than the fossil fuel burning competition. And it's interesting to see there is now an EM Escape S with a seat and headlight. The owner of this EM ePure loves it. The battery life is perfect for pottering around his private property for a few hours. There is a regenerative braking system, which is perfect for all his steep hills. On every descent, he can recapture some of that energy expended on the last climb. He still has a KDM 250 EXC in the garage for when he feels the need for speed, but the electric option works out well on his property and the noise <laughs> certainly won't worry the neighbors. He also has a Stark Varg on order. We have discussed it in a previous video. Plenty of guys were saying it was probably a scam, but buyers are finally receiving their orders in various countries. It certainly looks the part, and early tests suggest the power figures are accurate and that the Stark does handle well. But we were really skeptical about the claimed battery life. Six hours of battery life? Yeah. An engineer worked out that would only be possible if you used a constant 1.34 horsepower. Pretty much a walking pace. Unfortunately, Starkvarg has caused a lot of skepticism with over-the-top marketing hype like this. We don't trust the reports of social media influencers who no doubt get a good deal for their positive comments. But one real-world owner has put up some YouTube vids of his tests. Low speed technical riding, 41 kilometers until the battery was dead. Normal enduro riding, 54 kilometers. And on a sand track, 47 kilometers. Other riders are reporting similar results. Sure, it's not as good as a tank of fuel, but certainly better than what many of the critics were predicting. Deliveries began in March, 2023, our guy said he'll be receiving his Stark Varg in a few months, so we'll certainly be keen to do an objective review <laughs> if he lets us ride it. The good news, Stark has bumped up the battery capacity from 6 kWh to 6.5. The bad news, it bumped the weight up to 118 kilograms, which is now substantially heavier than its fossil fuel burning competitors. Unusual options are emerging. There is this bolt-on kit for Yamaha motocross models. The Suron Storm B has been out for a while now, but it's a lot heavier and less power than the Stark Varg. And all sorts of lightweight mountain bike hybrids are selling. <laughs> this one really hurts the eyes. Have you ridden an electric bike yet? Do you own one? Or will they have to remove that fuel burning machine from your cold dead fingers? Keen to hear your thoughts.